Let's talk about selecting a NAS. Uh, and and listener Terry sort of writes the per- wrote the perfect question without knowing uh, that he was going to set us up. He says, "What are your current recommendations for a two bay NAS?" Uh, and he says, "I would just like to do something that gets me started in the Synology world." So I figured I would have each of us. And Pete, uh, since we weren't expecting you for the show, I didn't ask you to prep this, and that's fine. So we, we will do it as the three of us uh, to prep what the. 2K, what the best two bay drive is, so you got me talking K's now, what the best two bay drive or Synology would be, two bay unit. And then also what would the, uh, we'll call it the either wishful thinking or the perfect world unit be for that each of us would recommend. Not necessarily, it may be the one that we're currently using, but it would be the one that we would recommend to you if you asked us this question today. Uh, so Jeff, you want to, you want to start with that one? Then John will go to you. Sure. All right. So for, for the two base side, I I'm picking exactly what I have because okay. why would I not have bought the, the very thing that I think is right. <laughs> and that's the, the two twenty J. And the reason I picked that is because if you're someone that is looking to get into Synology and you don't want to spend a fortune, and you want uh, a device that has really good performance and and is going to let you do all the things, this is a really great place to get in to the to the Synology world. And um, uh, in my case, you know, I, I bought it, popped in my drives, set it up so that well, I played with some stuff sure. and, and then just wiped everything and started over so that I, I could set it up as my backup and uh, and it works great it's uh you know it it is a solid machine at a reasonable price that will let you do all the things so if you're looking to just get in here's here's a good way to do that and yes there are others that will give you overall better performance but honestly I think for most people, they would never know the difference. Do you know if you can run Plex on the 220J? Oh, totally. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, that that's the, the Plex. There was a period of time, at least, where Plex was something that was not just universally runnable on your on your disk station. So, okay, well, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And I assume it runs really well. I'm not doing that. Sure. But. Yeah, I mean, if I wanted to, sure, I'll f- I could spin up Plex and uh, and and do it. Well, Dave, I'll say that with regards to Plex and the, the stations, I, the only difficulty I've had is if I leave some of my files in their MKV format. If I convert them to MP4, I don't seem to have any problems streaming. Interesting. But but MKV, I have problems going to the one television up upstairs. The the one in the living room seems to work fine. And so I don't know where the conversion issue is. It, it, I suspect it's in the television because it's well works on the on the main floor, but not the third floor. And I don't know. It's a mix of both. It, okay. With with Plex, the if it's possible, it will the the disk station will just send its raw contents right. out without having to transcode anything to right. whatever device you're playing it on your TV, your your phone, your iPad, whatever. Right. Uh, if the device doesn't support the format that it is in natively on your disk station or on your Plex server of any kind, yeah. then then the Plex server has to do its level best to transcode on the fly right. to get right. all of that there. And that can be it, that that's where the I'm sure yeah. that's where your issue is. I think One it's of, that TV then upstairs because yeah. sometimes even tra- t- setting the playback settings down to 320k. It, it still doesn't want to play. And I'm like, all right, I'll just change it over to MP4 and, it, and it's more. Well, it's more. probably that your Plex doesn't have the horsepower to transcode th- the, the MK, MKV videos on the fly yeah. at whatever size you have them. But but the other thing is you could go in to Plex and tell it to pre-transcode your videos. If, if you know a, a destination that you have, you can say, yeah, I, I will want you to pre-create a version that will work over there, and then you get the best of both worlds. So, oh, yeah. interesting. Okay, because yeah. what I've just been using handbrake and converting it to MP4, and yeah, not worrying about yeah, it. That, that works too. Yeah. 
Jeff, I we we tangentialized off of you. It, what would your uh, larger than two bay if 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 money were not so the that two twenty J is one hundred and eighty seven bucks. So mm -hmm. just to, to set the playing and that's field, that's bare. That's bare without drives. Yeah, we're going to talk about prices without drives. Thank you. So, what would your uh, your next level up be if 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 you were if you were to take that step, or if someone were to ask about that step? That would be the fifteen twenty plus. Yeah. And uh, and the reason I would go with this one, the, there's multiple reasons, of course. But sure, this one, I mean, you're starting off with five bays, okay, and it has plenty of horsepower. So this would be the machine that becomes my version of Dave's Synology. This is the one where I would do everything else, and uh, and then leave the uh, the 220J just as a dedicated backup device. Yep. Um, so, you know, you've got all of your bays, but that plus, that's the kicker for me because that means I can plug in extra uh, bay boxes. It doesn't. It, it doesn't? No, it, no. It, it, I mean, you can. That That is a truth about this unit, but the plus... As far as Synology has explained to me, the plus just means it has a little extra. Oh, okay. So yeah. I misunderstood why they were including the plus, but, yeah. it, but this one did. does what I what I would want, which is give the, me, me the ability to add more bays. So if I hit the point where I've decided I've outgrown what I can do with the storage that I have, I'm not having to start over I just add another box and keep going. Nice. Nice. And that Amazon has it for $766, $766 bare discless at the moment. Uh, QWE 1231 in the chat says that it is $67 cheaper. So $699, I would assume, at B&H Photo. So shop around, of course. Uh, but yeah, that's Always great. shop around. Always. John, Here's what was the you... secret? Go ahead, John. Yeah. Uh, here's the secret uh, as to what the numbers mean, um, Jeff. Um, the number, the first number after the DS is the maximum number of bays. Um, mm -hmm. Not the, the number. So that means basically that you can do a expansion, which is one of the things some units allow and some don't. That's not entirely true. Oh, can this, can this do 15 bays? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you it, can, it can be you expanded. You can throw two more oh. boxes onto this. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Right. Got it. And right. So here's the one that I picked for like a, a high-end one. because it's Oh, John, close. you forgot to tell him what the second part means. And, and oh, the, I'll play the this, year wait, Let was... me play the straight guy. Mm -hmm. John, that was amazing information. <laughs> Thank you so much. But what does the second set of numbers mean? I'm really curious. As far as I know, it's the year that that unit was created. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, All right, um, so what's your what's your pick for a two-bay, John? Um, it's close to what I have now. I have the 2018 version, but um, the DS420 Plus. Okay. Uh, um, that's not a two-bay unit. That's, what's your pick for a two-bay unit? I'm sorry, unit? DS420 Plus. <laughs> Say it again. You're going to have to try one more time for a two-bay unit. Oh, for a two bay. Um, What's your pick for a two bay unit? I, I know uh, what it is. It was the DS two eighteen play because you put it on our agenda for us here. Yes. Okay. And why did you pick the DS two eighteen play as the two bay unit? It's a two hundred thirty dollar unit, so a little bit more expensive than Jeff's two 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 twenty J two twenty J. Thank you. Um, I would say, you know that. It looks like the uh, processor is sufficient to do um, media, and they actually say, oh, make this a home multimedia center. So it, it, let, let's talk about this 218 play, because I chose it as well as my, my two-bay pick. Uh, Synology has a fantastic uh, comparison chart, which I will put on the... Uh, I'll put a link to the four units that we're going to discuss. So spoilers, the two I'm going to mention have already been mentioned, uh, including your 420 plus that I know you're going to talk about in a minute. But the, the 218 play and the 220J have the same processor, the Realtek RTD 1296. Uh, the one difference between them is that the 218 play 
has a one has one gigabyte of memory, whereas the 220J has 512 megs. And that can make a difference both in terms of uh, the number of apps that you can run, but also in terms of file sharing speeds. I've found more RAM for just based on the way Synology is architected makes a huge difference in terms of file sharing speeds. So, uh, so that, that, that was, I could see where that would be a thing. That was, yeah, that was the reason that I, I went up to it um, in, you know, for, for my pick and it wasn't that much more, and it lets you do Synology Hybrid RAID and and all of those yeah. things. So. You know, if the 220J wasn't the uh, the device that I wanted just for for the basic backups, yeah. and if I if I wanted to run a very robust file server, yeah, now I, I'd go with something uh, higher up the food chain. Yep. Um, but you know, even still, um, especially like if uh, if you're on Wi-Fi for your computer. I don't think a lot of people would notice that performance difference. That's fair. That's fair. That was more about future proofing for me sure. than, you know, but, but yeah, yeah. Either one of these, you're not going to like, in my opinion, you're not going to go wrong with either one of these. Um, yeah, for sure. All right, John. So tell us about the 420 plus the DS 420 plus, which was your, your sort of your, your pick for a step up. Yes. Um, uh, the reason I picked it is it's, close to an older one that I have, uh, but they upgraded some things on it. Okay. Uh, but the things I like about it, um, so four bays are enough for me. Right now, I think I have four eight terabyte drives Okay. in it. Um, let's see, uh, cache, NVMe cache. So you can do a, um, SSD cache, which helps speed up reads and or writes. Um, and they actually have a little utility that shows you the number of cache hits, which can help you determine whether you should do that or not. And it has two uh, gig Ethernet ports, so you can bond them if you want to get maximum speed. Cool. Cool. Good stuff. You know, bonding the ports, that's actually something I, I think people should be paying more attention to now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, the I, thing is, some of their higher-end machines, I think the fastest they have is 10 gigabit. Or no, I think they make something even faster than that. But a lot of their units have 10 gigabit ports. Oh, yeah. You can, yeah, you can get them with them. Uh, I, I don't know if, I guess some of them are, will just come out of the out of the gate like that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Do we need to talk about what port bonding is? No. I think okay, we should good. we should save that for another time. It just it makes it lets you use two Ethernet ports and go twice as fast if your network can support it. How, how's that, Jeff? Is that, that good? That's Keeping absolutely out of the perfect. Weeds. <laughs> We're the out two, of the weeds. The, the, my my picks will be quick because I also, like I said, went with the DS two eighteen play, and then the fifteen twenty plus is is the one like you, Jeff, that I would pick as sort of the step up uh, for most folks, and. It is, it also, you said it was it, it, your pick to match a, you know, what I do with my disk station. It turns out that is exactly the disk station that I use is the DS1520 plus uh, these days. It's got a four core Celeron J125 processor in there. It comes with eight gigs of RAM, which I really like. The, the one you picked on the 420 plus comes with two gigs. You can upgrade it to six. And and I would highly recommend doing that if if you're going to start doing the things that we're talking about doing with these, pour RAM on these things. Put it, mm -hmm. get them up. RAM is is relatively cheap these days, even with supply chain stuff. It's just not terribly terribly expensive. And so I I, I just highly recommend putting maxing them out with RAM, and then and then you don't have to think about it after day one. But that's 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 the that's the like I said that's the unit I use, and uh, it's fantastic. It just it does all the things I mentioned, and there are some things I didn't mention. So that we'll get to eventually. So yeah, 